episode three of the Journey for Java podcast is here. I am joined this week by Will Wells of the Artery Community Roasters in beautiful Ottawa, Canada. How are you, man? Good. Thanks so much for having me. It's a trip. Dude, thanks for making the time. I appreciate it. I uh, Your your uh, roastery was put on my radar by some friends of mine. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine, Aaron Coyle in Ottawa, sent me a note saying, you got to check these guys out. I think you'd love it. Um, you know, just on a, just in a general term of trying to get your coffee sent to me or, or buying some online or getting some shipped out. She's like, Oh, I really like it. It's awesome. But what they do in the core of what they do um, of hiring people with disabilities is just such a great story. And uh, she thought it would fit perfectly into, you know, the journey for Java podcast and what we're trying to do with it and tell great stories and things like that. So uh, I couldn't wait to get you on and, and you made a time and I appreciate it, man. So welcome. Oh, thanks. This is awesome. Yeah, no, I it, I love talking about what we're doing, and uh, you know, I love talking about two things, and that's kind of, you know, my staff, and then great coffee, which is the two things we do. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm here. I'm here for it. Let's get into it. Now it looks like you're in Scuttlebutt Lodge, Dairy. Yeah, so, guys- like, that's, so I'm actually. Uh, so I'm not in the roastery now because I am kind of. I live out in the uh, in the countries of in the in the wilds of Quebec, and. Uh, we're under curfew, so we can't leave our house past eight. So a couple of times I've gotten stopped coming back from the roast curfew a bit late. So uh, I thought we'd—I I have sent you a video that uh, I know yeah. we can uh, we can talk about later. But uh, for now, I'm just kind of in my little uh, little chalet next to my house, which I kind of my little escape. So it's not as fancy as uh, some, but it's cozy. I got a Works. fireplace and fun stuff. Yeah. Watch some hockey, chill out. It's good. Yeah, it's no, good. Yeah, I'm I mean, an Ontario guy, so for me, it's uh, I'm I'm you know I'm east of Toronto. I'm 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 used to it, man. Gathering around yeah. a fire and uh, hanging out. Uh, it was my youth. So yeah, for but sure. here we are uh, uh, in uh, coffee now in podcasting. Um, I did a series uh, the first time through um, called the Coffee Cast, where you know I, I dove a little bit into the process of coffee and, and introducing people to it and dumbing it down because for me, it was a relatively new journey for me, but totally. I, um, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different kinds of coffee conversations that happen. So I can talk all day long about roasters and different things like that. And we can talk gear and all the rest of it, but I'm fascinated actually in the process uh, of how this whole thing came together. So yeah, sure, let's, yeah. um, why don't you run down what, what the roastery is all about and, and yeah, how it so, came together. You know, on, on, on the surface of it, you know, we kind of have like, I'd say two kind of general overarching missions and that's one hiring people living with disabilities and paying them a living wage. So, you know, and even then uh, our salary started at $16 an hour and, uh, you know, I wish I could pay even more than that. So the goal is to keep kind of getting bigger so we can kind of do more full-time work for people and benefits. That's the one side. Uh, is, is giving them meaningful work and making them, you know, part of the team and, and they're contributing and they're helping to build this, this incredible product. And that's the second thing is, is, is specialty coffee. So we're not just kind of uh, a social enterprise just trying to give people jobs. We're also trying to, you know, do really good special specialty coffee and make it, like you were saying, not that we're trying to dumb down the coffee, but we're trying to make it uh, coffee that can kind of be a stepping stone into specialty because a lot of people find specialty a bit... Uh, uh, hard to get into, you know, you have these companies with really polished looking boxes and it looks like you're buying like, like a, a, like a diamond inside of a, of a box. It's just coffee. Right. So we try and make it really approachable. Um, but again, these are really kind of high end, single origin, single producer coffees for the most part, uh, roasted and packaged, uh, by myself and my staff. So, uh, that's kind of the two main missions I'd say is just the ethics behind actually how we roast it and package it, which is hiring people with disabilities. And then, making sure that it's really kind of direct trade uh, and uh, building relationships with the farmers too. A lot of roasters kind of say uh, direct trade and throw it out there, but we really are kind of, you know, uh, getting to know the, the the producers. They know our names, we know their names, and, and we're hoping to kind of it's, get together post-COVID. It's important yeah. to me to to tell that story a little bit about how, how important it is to have that relationship with the farmers. Um, yeah. From the standpoint, I don't think a lot of people understand, hopefully they're learning through this, but right. I don't think a lot of people understand but just how competitive it is and and just like that you really have to, you know, you you guys independently have to set the, the market, you know, or these guys are going to, you know, lose their, they're going to oh, lose man, their farms, you know. People don't realize, you know, like coffee producers have it tough to say the least. I mean, 70% of the world's coffee producers are food insecure, so they don't have a meal every day, 70%. Um, in Colombia, which is, you know, uh, one of the the greatest regions in the world for coffee, 
98% of the coffee is sold below or at fair market price. And fair market price is already too low. So 98% of the coffees, these amazing coffees, are being sold for way below what they're actually worth. So what we're trying to do is, you know, we, we, we work with a guy named Brandon Adams in Montreal who's really more of a coffee advocate than, a, than an importer. And he doesn't work with big companies and stuff. And he connects us directly with the farmers. And from there, you know, we, we build relationships and, you know, go to my Instagram page. It's just filled with the farmers that we work with commenting and, and, and talking to us and saying, oh, I love the way you've done with the product. So it really is like a building relationship and, and, and talking about building relationship, you know, it gets us great coffee, but at the same time, like we're paying them above, uh, above market. And you can go on our website and see the, the farm gate price, which is what we pay farmers, which most companies won't kind of say what they, what they pay. Sure. And not just that too, but let's say next year they have a bad crop. So our, our friend, the Ortega family, who we're really close to, we've bought three of their coffee, four of their coffees already. We're really kind of in with, with, with them and what they're doing, the, the, how they pay their staff. Um, let's say next year they have a bad crop. So this amazing coffee we have this year, which... Uh, you know, people, the coffee world, we, we talk about coffee score. So let's say we have an 88 or an 87 coffee from them, which is a really high scoring coffee. Maybe next year, that same variety takes a dip. There's a, for whatever reason, there's so many varieties, especially with climate change that can affect the coffee. It goes down to an 84. So a lot of specialty roasters are going to say, sorry, you know, like I can't buy an 84. It's just the step, the step down in quality is too much. And that ruins that farmer. I mean, if they can't, sell that coffee. They go hungry that year. They can't reinvest in their farm. So what we do is we say, no, we'll still buy that coffee and I'll figure out, I'll put it into a blend. I'll, I'll roast it a bit darker for the folks that like a darker roast. Like you can, an 84 for most people that, that kind of like a, a good cup of coffee, they're not going to, that's a really good, an 84 is still a really good cup of coffee, but for, for, you know, the higher end roasteries, they don't touch it. So that just ruins farms. So for us, we're not about that. Like the relationships with the farmers and relationships with my staff that comes before kind of that pursuit of the perfect cup because i think that kind of uh when you start kind of looking for that perfect cup it gets in, in front of your actual the goals the ethics behind the business right you kind of get your, your judgment gets clouded so well you got to keep it fun and that was the, po the point for me about doing this um podcast really was to dumb down the journey to the point of um like what how do they get rankings and how do they rank coffee yeah. and, and yeah. educating people on that side of it um i wrote an article a while ago called you know which coffee asshole are you right and it offended i'm all of them <laughs> but, it, <laughs> so. but it if but it but everyone is one in some capacity yeah, totally. you, don't, you have to pick through but what it did do is it was a really funny bit because it was it offended a lot of like the <laughs> You know, well, it's it's no different than a, than a, somebody that's great with wine or whatever. It's the same. It's the same shit. There's this level, and I'm like, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to enjoy it. What I what I do want people to do is get out of the drive through, yeah, and get in and and get out of your car. But part of this that I'm doing is I'm also going to A and W, and I'm going to Seven Eleven, and I'm going to all these totally. places yeah. and saying what how do you how does yours taste and whatever, and just dumbing it down. But right. I love the fact that you're still. Um, you know, ranking aside, sure, I'm, I'm sure you want to offer the highest rank you can, but supporting the farmers from that regard, no matter what, you know, I'm sure if it dips to like a 60, you'd probably have something to say. But, yeah, you, know, you know, I think it, it would have yeah. to keep a, a level. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So it's super important to us. And, and, and like, again, like I always say, like, what goes around comes around too. So like when we start doing that kind of stuff and we build the relationships, um, when they do have like a real special coffee, so they have a geisha or one of these, you know, varieties that's really sought after, uh, maybe they'll, they'll offer it to me before some bigger roaster that, which, which would be better for them in a way to have it, the bigger roaster, uh, say, you know, I have the Ortega family, so-and-so, uh, variety, but maybe they offer to us cause we've been there in the, in the bad right. times, but really, you know, it goes around, comes around. That's kind of what I always think when it comes to business. So. Well, it seems like a method that you're practicing. Um, obviously, I want to touch here on hiring people with disabilities. So yeah. um, walk me through that because um, yeah. I, I'm sure it has its challenges just in itself of the, of the sure. implementation, but obviously trying to offer a space. So how does that idea come together? And, yeah, and, totally. And yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of been a, a dream in the making for a while. So um, maybe 10, 11 years ago, my, my girlfriend, who's my wife now, I uh, started volunteering at this organization called Able To, which was what well, was called Citizen Advocacy at the time. Now it's called Able To. And what it is, it's a matching program. So they take people with disabilities and volunteers that are kind of uh, ready to volunteer as like an ally or a friend or a mentor, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, they do stuff together. So you can either, you know, help them with a the CV. You can go to Tim Hortons. You can 
go to a movie, just a friend. Because, you know, what people don't realize is we take our, like our relationships for granted, I think, a lot of the time. So the average person in Canada, say, has about 125, 150 people that they can actually call part of their support network so not just like your thousand facebook friends but like 150 people that you could call that you know that you see on a fairly regular basis i mean pre pre-covid right so 150 if you take somebody let's say in canada with a cognitive disability that support network shrinks down to about two or three people so it really is like uh, for a lot of people that have disabilities they're isolated right they're not in uh they don't get to go to a job every day they don't get to maybe go to school every day so um, I think by, by offering this kind of opportunity, uh, or sorry. So anyways, the matching program, uh, kind of pairs people. So I was super into that. I got involved with the matching program. Um, and just to, to kind of help someone expand their, their network a bit. Right. So I got I paired with a guy named Jesse, who was awesome dude, um, raised by his 18 year old brother. They had a really tough life, but they're, they're wonderful kids and, uh, or one adults, you know, young adults. Uh, he passed away from cancer a couple of years ago. Then I got further involved with the charity and I started kind of sitting on the board of directors. I started um, being the chair of this, uh, this in the spotlight event where was people, uh, artists with disabilities come from around the world to perform at the casino here in Ottawa or Ottawa Gatineau. Um, so I was really getting involved with the charity. I got uh, back paired with, um, you know, through the matching program with another guy. And, you know, during these times with, with the community, I kept hearing the same thing, which is, you know, it's great that we have these kind of like dances or we have these Christmas parties and stuff, but we wish we could have jobs. Like none of us have real kind of jobs. And that's for a lot of reasons too. It's uh, for one, like, like we were just alluding to before, like there are some challenges with uh, hiring people with disabilities, so depending on the, on the person and, and the job. Like if you're in a construction site, it may not work for some people with disabilities. And so there's obviously that reduced pool of, of candidates. And then the second thing is they have a lot of like disability payment issues. So if you work too many hours, you can lose your sure. disability payment. So there's lots of that. And some bosses just don't want to have to deal with managing that or helping to manage that. So anyways, I kept hearing these same stories about not being able to find a job. And it's not so much about, I mean, it's sure people want to get paid well, they want to get you know, income, but it's also about being belonging to something and contributing to something. So I thought, okay, how can I help? How can I play a small role in like using my privilege to do something? So I had this idea of running a coffee shop for a while. And knowing, you know, think I used to be a barista back in the day. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm going to put other people through that because it's a really tough job. Uh, and I thought, what about coffee roasting? So uh, I've been a roaster and a garage roaster in this very garage, you know, behind me for 10 years. Um, started off in a frying pan after a cab driver told me in Ethiopia, this is how my family did it. So I started doing it in a, in a frying pan and kind of went to a smaller where did uh, you get your roast. beans from? Where did you get your beans from at that time? If you're like an, okay, so, I'm gonna, so how, like, do I do, yeah. how do I do this? How do I, what yeah. do I do? So he, so this guy was, you know, I took this guy like a cab every back in the day. So it was funny enough, speaking of COVID, I was working on the H1N1 file uh, for the government. I'm also a public servant during the day. And I was taking late night cabs. I was working till midnight every night. Mm -hmm. I was taking the same cab. He was always there. So we became pretty close. And he told me about the coffee and I said, okay, I need to find green beans. He said, okay, there's a place, Blue Nile restaurant. They might sell to you if you go in there and, you know, and, and ask nicely. They don't really usually sell. But I went in. I, I kind of found that they had some green beans. Started talking to them. They started selling me green beans. I found another little corner store that sold me Ethiopian Rafi that was, like, really good for, like, $6 a pound, which, you know, for a small, small bulk was really good. So I was kind of – and they'd always tell me, like, don't tell your friends about this. This is not – you know, like, this is, like, you don't want lots of people buying this. So, like, I had my spots. And – uh and yeah, I just started roasting for like charities, started roasting for friends and that kind of stuff. And I just started thinking, this is, this is what I'm going to do. So I started telling lots of people about this idea that I wanted to do a social enterprise roastery. I would pretty much tell anybody who would listen. And, and thankfully for me, one of the guys who was listening was Ian Fraser. So he's the executive director of Run Ottawa, which is the uh, not-for-profit in Ottawa that does the marathon, which is one of the biggest, I think, marathons in Canada. And um, if not the biggest... I don't want to start a feud between yeah, between right. rival marathons, but uh, he uh, he said I have a pretty big warehousey space in the back of our HQ. Why don't you set up a roastery there? And I said okay. So that was just in September. Uh, so really, we came together really quick in three just months. Past September, September of yeah, twenty. Just, just past September, you know wow. they they just have to they just had to kind of like canceled their big marathon into a virtual race. They were looking for other ways to diversify and kind of get into more of a 
uh, expand into kind of like lifestyle products and that kind of stuff because they're all about health and everything. And obviously, coffee is good for you as, unless you drink like 12 cups a day like I do. But um, so, yeah, so he was just like, let's let's roast a coffee together. So I, I, I do a coffee line for them called uh, Tempo Blend, which is really a nice uh, two origin coffee. And, um, and then they gave me kind of a space in the back of their warehouse where I set up shop. I'd already had my eye on a roaster for a while that I wanted. We can get into that too. And I have a video of that for you guys. Um, and I had some ideas and I'd already kind of had a few connections in the coffee world. So I just kind of worked 80 hour weeks and <laughs> got it all together, you know? So, so really, I, I was going to ask you, like, how long have you really been in business for when you were doing it out of your, out of the Scuttlebutt Lodge there that I see? Yeah. You're right. doing it out of different things. Were you selling it or are you just doing it to try to master it? And then no, I was just doing it out of a, a love right. of getting really fresh coffee, sure. you know, yeah, like I was something we all want to learn. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, and it's so easy to do. I always tell people, like, obviously, I want you to buy beans from me, but it's so easy to roast your own too. Um, And you may, you probably won't get um, the quality of green beans that I get because you're not buying in bulk and you don't have the connections, you know. And you and you probably won't get as consistent roast in a you know frying pan or a popcorn machine. But it's still so fun and to have like freshly roasted beans. Um, So yeah, like it's just one of those things where. I was just doing it for fun and I was, and I was doing it at, uh, for charity events. And, and, and once in a while I had, um, I started a basketball tournament, uh, just a charity basketball tournament. And for that, I did up a bunch of baskets with coffee and those all sold. And I was thinking, okay, like it's good coffee. It's selling. So that kind of further kind of solidified my desire to get this in motion. So. It's a really cool. I I just had uh, the coffee queen on uh, in episode two uh, that we ran into when I was over in um, Oslo, Norway. I was at Tim Wendelbo, which is one of my favorite coffees in the world. He's a great guy. He was on episode 10. And um, next door, they have a company called Roost. Roost. Yeah, they're so cool. Yeah, yeah, the the, the home, the home. uh, uh, Sample roaster. roaster. Yeah. So so cool. It's such a great machine. And, um, you know, not. Uh, affordable for your average yeah, person starting yeah. out, but it's a even really great for your, machine even for me. It's tough. Yeah. I, I looked at it and I love it because yeah. it has zero, zero smoke and stuff too. Right. So it's so cool. But yeah, uh, she was cool. She, she gave me the tour and everything. And so we were able to record that and uh, talk a little bit about that. So um, home roasting is definitely something that's still away from me. I, I have to add it to my world, but I'm, I'm definitely getting excited to add that oh, as yeah. the next kind of step. Uh, to go I always with tell that. people like just go on Kijiji, look for an old Beemore. Like I got my first Beemore for like two hundred bucks uh, from this dude who um, was had health problems and couldn't drink coffee anymore. So he kind of hooked me up with this Beemore and a whole bunch of green beans and told me and some went. tricks. And off I went. Yeah. So like I would just say get on Kijiji or like Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace, get a Beemore and like. There's a challenge for the listener. So yeah. if you're listening out there and you're like, listen, I, I need a, I need something to do. I need something to do at home. We're going to issue the challenge right now. And in about four weeks, Will's going to come back on the show and we're going to, we're going to see how you did. We're going to get you to send (laughs) and send me an email. I'll tell you how to do it. It's super easy. Yeah. That's that's exciting, man. Yeah. So you're really only going since September. um, And yeah, so we opened December 10th is when we actually went online for sales. So, and then, so, you know, this whole thing with COVID and everything, I mean, I guess you couldn't gauge before and after. So, I um, mean, I guess my question is what, how is it going then in the current state of the world for coffee yeah. and you, you know? I mean, like, it's funny. So, I mean, not funny. It's, it sucks how obviously COVID sucks for many reasons, but there's the hard, you know, it feels weird opening up a business when so many other businesses are closing or, you know, facing serious financial hardship. But the truth of the matter is it kind of provided me an opportunity for a couple of reasons. And, you know, for one, um my sleep got completely twisted upside down and i was up at all hours of the night and i thought okay what better use of my time can i do than watch netflix and play like video games right so i started i started you know putting pen to paper and working on this idea a bit more and uh and and also people are buying more coffee the reality is people aren't going to starbucks anymore people aren't going to their local coffee shop because they're not at work anymore so people are buying the brevels and Everybody's Mm. buying an espresso machine for home, so they want better coffee. And I think people are realizing too, like I've heard a few people say, okay, I want an espresso that tastes like it tastes at the coffee shop I go to near my work and the the beans I buy at Costco aren't doing that, right? So like a lot of of people are just trying to get in that pursuit of that cup, whereas before on the weekends, okay, I can get away with just making a 
you know, some drip coffee from Costco. But now when you're stuck at home all week, you want something a bit better, maybe. So you start seeking out a bit more specialty roasters. Sure. So I think there was an opportunity there for me. Um, at the same time, COVID obviously adds a lot of obstacles, uh, coffee shops. Like it's, it's not like we're not really pitching that much to business to businesses right now because you can't go to a restaurant and say, hey, I know you're not open right now, but uh, do you want to pay more for coffee? You know, so it's been a bit trickier that way. My staff can't be in the roastery at the moment because a lot of them have underlying health conditions. So mm. we have people working from home and, and we're trying to get creative with the ways we can uh, – we can get people to work and we have, you know, our bike courier, he's out and around, out and about, but everyone else is working from home. So there was, there's been obstacles because of COVID for sure. Are you strictly, um, I, I just not there. Are you, are you brick and mortar at all? Or are you strictly selling online and it's like a ship out business? What, how, how is, you know? Yeah. So for right it now it's, you? it's online, but uh, we have a few irons that are hopefully going to strike once uh, the restrictions get lifted. So mm-hmm. we'll be able to be picked picked up in, in a few different spots around Ottawa. And then eventually I think uh, we have a few different uh, options we're looking at for more kind of nationwide or, or at least provincial wide and that kind of stuff. So yeah, early stages. So for now it's, it's, it's mostly online, um, but we do have a few spots in Ottawa that should be carrying us you know, soon. Yeah. We'll list all those when we, uh, when we post awesome. the video and, and all the rest of it. So you guys can uh, order it and take it yeah. to your house and, and, and make it. And hopefully by then, you're also uh, doing your own beans and we're going to have a whole thing. So I, uh, d- does the, um, uh, the, uh, the hiring people, you know, that are struggling or have disabilities, does that apply to everywhere? Are you, are you, have you asked, you know, your farmer, have you said, Hey, is there any chance, you know, you yeah, can, totally actually we have you know, um, like that. Yeah. So a great question. Yeah. So I really try and, 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 and make it, you know, my ethos, you know, like, like you had, uh, the curb your enthusiasm star on your first episode like larry david always says he tries to find a bald accountant a bald you know a bald professional wherever he can right as much as i can i try and hire somebody with a disability through throughout our value chain so right now we have people obviously here in ottawa or in and our social media manager aaron out in halifax and also uh we're working with um uh, uh, uh baho coffee in rwanda so they're the, they run the fuji washing station and they're super awesome they have uh they mostly hire like women managers. They have inc- complete micro lots that are great women stuff. run from, from widowed women. So it's like a really cool and they pay pensions really great. And also we've talked to their owner, Emmanuel, uh, through my friend, Brandon in Montreal, who's obviously connecting all connecting us. He's the connector about if we pay even further premiums on the coffee, can you increase the hiring people with disabilities and, and pickers? And they, are, and they already have a lot of processors with people with disabilities because in Rwanda, they have a huge proportion of people with disabilities after the genocide. So that's part of our, our mission is to get more pro, uh, you know pickers, uh, processors, and and, and washers um, with disabilities hired in Rwanda. So that's a huge a huge mission that we're kind of looking at in phase two, and already started kind of getting the ball rolling. And also in March, I'm super excited that we have uh, an incredible connection with a new farmer in Colombia who, for 37 years, has been farming on one leg. So once we kind of discovered him through again our, our contacts and how incredible his coffee is. We thought it really aligned with our mission. So we're going to be buying a lot of his coffee and it really is like amazing, amazing coffee too. Okay. So yeah, so it really is something in throughout the value chain we try and we try and employ. Um, we're going to get to a couple of different things here. Um, but um, so can people, do you, do you have a constant um, fundraising platform? I, I know yeah. that you've got like a, a GoFundMe for, for somebody on, on your page that's uh, yeah, so the, lost their life, but I mean, yeah. just overall. Like, do you yeah, no, for sure we do. So, um, yeah, that GoFundMe was for, um, we work with uh, these farmers in Guatemala called Cafe Colas Resistancia, and they're a group of indigenous Chinka farmers who uh, grow amazing coffee and also right now are kind of trying to defend their lands against the silver mine that's H- it's actually headquartered in Canada, but they're not really Canadian-owned. But they... Um, but they're headquartered here and they're kind of trying to kind of get encroach on their ancestral lands uh, and, and break the, their, their indigenous rights to kind of uh, take over their land. And, and it really is you know, turned violent. And uh, mm. this one guy who's, who's part of the movement was shot and I, I you know, he has survived, but uh, they're trying to raise money to kind of increase security and that kind of stuff. So it's a really tragic situation, but something that we try and support big time. Um, so yeah, so that so that was one. Uh, what was the original question again? I was just like, about like an overall. Like I don't think oh, people then, yeah, un- sorry about understand. That. I don't yeah. think people understand right. how difficult it is to get. You know, right? Coffee. Yeah, 
and and are you know the fact that you are hiring people with disabilities and, and you're paying benefits and and a good wage but right on your site do you have a consistent um fundraising campaign going or anything like that where people right. can donate? yeah so actually the, through just buying our coffee so i just like you know a five percent of all our, our our proceeds go right to able to that's just the baseline and then a lot of the times you'll see on our coffee like if you buy this coffee an extra dollar goes to able to um and then you know right now we have a valentine's day box that's coming out where ten dollars is going to able to so pretty much we always try and, and and work in uh donations that way to the program um so yeah fundraising has been really tricky i mean able to the organization that i, I sit on the board and, and who support us and who we support they had to cancel, you know, their uh, their big fundraising events all year for the past year, and that mm-hmm. that hurts. You know, that's yeah. the bread and butter for a lot of these organizations. So, Certainly. definitely by buying our coffee, you're not only supporting ethical, you know, uh, farmers, not only supporting uh, the high people with disabilities, you're also giving money to able to, which is supporting a lot of people throughout Canada with disabilities. So. Um, keeping with the funny theme. So yes, I did kick off this series with Jeremy Gersey, who was the original Mocha Joe uh, that J- Larry David based, uh, uh, you know, th- that character off of for Kirby Enthusiasm. Now uh, you are a Seinfeld fan like myself, and you have actually named a coffee uh, after, <laughs> after Kirby Enthusiasm. Oh, what is the name yeah, of that coffee? Sure. Cause I loved it. Yeah, I had to, I'm a huge, like Larry David is my, uh, is pretty much my religion. I think if I had to, if I had to give one, but uh so that's curb your caffeineism is our is our dedicated blend. <laughs> that's, your decaf? For that's your decaf, right? It's a, it's a half decaf, a half decaf, and then with two single origin, a red couture and a yellow couture. So it's actually a really good coffee too. But the tasting notes on it are pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, we have a, a few a few knocks to Mocha Joe on the back. So yeah, it really is Amazing. for uh, for any curb fans. And even speaking of curb, like just the other uh, the other week, we had a. a we, we post a lot of curb stuff on our Instagram. So a lot of our customers who are curb fans will, will are in on the joke too. And uh, one, one of the, someone had placed an order and they put your best friend. And I don't know if anybody remembers, but like it's a deep, a deep curb cut when Marty Funkhauser, the great super Dave Osborne, who recently passed away. Yeah. Uh, he tells Larry, he's he's upset at Larry because Larry steals flowers from his mom's funeral. And he says, if you weren't my best friend and Larry goes, I'm not your best friend. So like I just return on the, on the box. I just put in big letters. I'm not your best friend. So like oh, just, maybe. we really just try to have fun with the curb. The curb is a big part of our, you know, the undercurrent of our, of our roastery for sure. Well, it's great. We'll have a merging of the minds when uh, I get uh, Jeremy back on with you and we're going to talk gear and a whole bunch of different things. It's going to be fun. All right. It is time for a segment on here called the espresso shot. All right. So I'm going to rhyme off a couple of questions for you. Uh, I want to see how fast you can answer them. Uh, We're going to try to try to do this two minutes and under whatever. We'll see if we can get there. Yeah. We'll cool. cut it together. We'll cut it together. But That's anyways, so here we go. You standing by? We're ready to yeah, go. I'm good. I'm ready to go. Yeah. This is Will from uh, the Artery Community Roasters in Scuttlebutt Lodge. There in. Uh, beautiful- I'm gonna start calling it Scuttlebutt Lodge. That's gonna. I'm gonna have to get a sign made. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. Favorite coffee. Uh, Geisha. Favorite method of making coffee. Espresso. How do you make the espresso? So many different ways, but not conventional. I'd say is the, the best answer I'd give. I don't. I don't stick to a, a one to two. You're driving down the road. You uh, have a choice to make. You hit the hotel, and uh, you got to either drink the hotel coffee, or you got to go back out to the truck stop because uh, those are your only options on this one road town. Which one do you pick? Truck stop. Better because conversation. Better conversation and and probably cleaner plates. Cleaner plates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best coffee region, in your opinion? Oof, that's so tough. I'm gonna go with Colombia. Colombia. All right. I love Colombia. Yeah, wash Colombian. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Uh, your go-to start out coffee for someone just starting in coffee. As in, like go to a cafe or, or, you know, if you're going to drive through, get this, or if you're going to, you know, if there's somebody that's never drank coffee before they come up to you, you have to remove your product from the equation and say, all right, if you're going to start, you got to start with this. Right. Well, for one, I would say the roast, I would say 
don't first of all stop going with the dark roast just start going with a medium roast so just kind of get your used to a bit of the acid in the back so i would say kind of a medium uh central american like a costa rican colombian coffee something that's gonna be super balanced but still have some nice fruit to it just to show you that like coffee can have a lot more f notes to it than just kind of like that that dark that dark taste you know we all know how i feel about dark and final question the biggest misconception about coffee um that's so hard you know I, I, right off the bat i think the biggest misconception i would say about coffee is that it should cost ten dollars a pound it should cost way more than that which would drive the price in the stores up to about nine bucks a cup probably which would just <laughs> so yeah that's a tough one yeah, it's a tough one, right? that much but yeah like it's it's hard though, like when you walk into the grocery store and you see like you know Costco and it's like two pounds of coffee for fourteen dollars. Like that's it's not the true cost of coffee, you know. Well, that's what we're gonna try to do on this is educate a little bit more. That is the espresso shot with Will. All right, so it is time uh, to wrap it up, my friend. Um, uh, awesome. Just a couple of things. I number one, I, I really appreciate making the time today. That was great. Uh, no, I probably to, loved it. To yeah. come on um, and really talk about it, I'm fascinated with your business and what you're doing. I think you're doing fantastic things, um, and it's uh, going to just keep getting better, especially when can when people can get out and get out a little bit more we're a little bit more free out here in british columbia we can actually go to right. a coffee shop and, and a few things right. but um when the world resets uh your yeah. story is going to play play and play well so oh, thanks. Um, I appreciate it. where can people find you online and in ottawa yeah so the artery community roasters.com so we have a really good website with tons of information about the coffees about our mission about our staff and uh right now we have six different coffees and about uh two weeks we'll have 11 different coffees and that's including the big new tempo blend with uh, run ottawa so go to their website for that one but yeah come to our website find us on instagram we're super active on instagram we have my social media manager aaron who uh is really great she runs the the instagram for the most part so you can engage with her she asks her questions every thursday she has like a and uh, ask me anything kind of kind of stream on instagram so yeah so uh right now we're online but we hope to be in lots of stores and we'll post it online and uh share as much as we can but we appreciate all the support and if you don't buy you know our coffee still follow us on instagram and uh you know see all the stuff we're sharing with disability awareness definitely great great cause and uh i'm a huge fan now and i'm very very happy to have discovered you thanks aaron coyle in uh in ottawa for for passing along the info yeah, thanks, uh <laughs> wonderful instagram came along and uh and here we are connected uh over coffee that seems to just connect people around the world constantly oh yeah so yeah i appreciate the time will um thanks so much Brenton. this yeah. has been episode three of the journey for java my journey for java took me to ottawa canada today the Artery Community Roasters, and uh, Will, my new friend. Please come back anytime. Uh, lots to talk about. I'd love to. Yeah, I can talk coffee all day. So can hopefully the listeners <laughs> listen to it. That's right, the yeah. plan. Yeah. So thanks, everybody. Until thanks. next week.